Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says, which is larger, the square root of the quantity five factorial or the quantity square root of five factorial? This is day 19 of our algebra March calendar. For the month of March, we're gonna solve 28 algebra problems. There's some pretty cool looking ones in here. And if you wanna try this one, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. Both of these contain a factorial. Let's talk about factorials. Here are some examples of whole number factorials. Three factorial means three times two times one, four factorials, four times three times two times one, and five factorials, five times four times three times two times one, and so on. And we're most specifically interested in this five factorial, because that's what we have inside of the square root here. We can simplify this five times four times three times two times one is 120. And then to make it look just like this first term, we can square root both sides. And now we have an exact value for the square root of the quantity five factorial. Next, let's look at the quantity square root of five factorial. Once again, here's all the different factorials and one factorial is equal to one and two factorial is equal to two, three factorial is equal to six, four factorial is equal to 24 and five factorial is equal to 120. We can express each of these as plotted points where this number is our X value and this number is our Y value. And here are the plotted points in Desmos. We have one, one, two, two, three, six. Up here is the four, 24, and even way up high is the five, 120. These are discrete points. There's jumps in the graph, but there's a function called the gamma function that we can use to fill in these gaps. Here are the notes right here. We don't need to know too much about the gamma function except for the fact it fills in the gaps. So you can see how it goes through all of our points, even the one way up here. So if we have a number between this number and this number, the factorial has to be between those numbers. We can say the square root of four factorial is less than the square root of five factorial is less than the square root of nine factorial. And the square root of four is equal to two. We can bring this part down and square root of nine is equal to three. And then two factorial is equal to two. Let's bring this down again. And three factorial is equal to six. We don't know for sure what this is equal to, but we know that it's in between two and six. Now I think we can find a relationship between these. This six would be the same thing as square root of 36. And then if we go back up here, we know for sure that square root of 36 will be less than square root of 120. And then we know that the square root of 120 is equal to the square root of five factorial. So let's replace the square root of 120 with square root of five factorial. Now, both of these contain a square root of 36. Let's smash them together. And we're not gonna need the two or the square root of 36. And these ended up switching order, let's swap them. And this is the answer to our question. Let's put a box around it. And if you're curious, this one is approximately equal to 10.95, and this one is approximately equal to 2.51. And these are how you calculate each of them. You can plug this into a calculator, and you can plug this into an advanced calculator. I don't think there's any way to do this one by hand. How exciting. And here's the next question. It says solve for x. So it's four times the square root of x times the square root of the quantity five factorial equals eight x, and x does not equal zero. This looks like a fun one. How exciting.